Good morning. So since one of my biggest goals for 2022 is to read as many books as possible and indeed to read 50 books or more, um, today's video is about how important reading is and all of the books that I have read in the last year that have made a big impact on me and all of the books that I want to read in the next coming months and that in order to become a smarter person, learn more about the world and in general, you know, just enjoy the art of reading. And so first off, the most impactful books I read this year were probably uh, Ray Kurzweil's The Singularity is Near, Bill Gates's How to Avoid a Climate Disaster, and Nick Bostrom's Superintelligence. These are some of the books, uh, all non-fictions in fact, that just had the biggest impact on my way of thinking about the world and the future of humanity and technology at large. I read some other great books, especially I reread Sapiens, and like if you haven't read it, you need to read it because it's an amazing primer on the history of humans and biology as a whole. But in particular, Superintelligence um, was all about AI and the future of AI and super intelligent machines and how we need to be careful about designing those because they have such a potentially big impact on our future. Ray Kurzweil's The Singularity is Near is um, a bit more sci-fi pie in the sky but like a really good scientific, scientifically based look from 2004 at the future of technology and machines and the potential for just really incredible human progress in the coming years. Um, the Millennial Project was another great sci-fi book that I read. Oh my goodness! Too much knowledge floating around here. The Millennial Project was another really good book I read. Also old, but about the potential ways that humanity could colonize the solar system using real science, not pie in the sky science fiction, but actual physics that we have at our disposal today uh, and ways of going around and using the resources in the solar system for good. Uh, and so that just really got me thinking, uh, especially with the Mars exploration project that SpaceX is undertaking now. Just all the cool things that we could actually accomplish in the near future. Yeah. Obviously, Bill Gates' um, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster, a really good primer on how the carbon cycle actually works and how humans and our technology can save the planet and in, indeed the ecosphere from climate disaster and just really interesting uh, solutions to, you know, the often talked about disaster that is climate change, but actual practical things that we can do to, you know, solve the climate problem. And that was a really good book and I think everyone should read it. It's a really good primer on how the modern day world works and how a lot of the things that we do with regards to technology and pollution and that can't just stop overnight. We can't stop using oil overnight because society as we know it would disappear and collapse and indeed we've already done too much uh too much bad to the ecosystem and the ecosphere of planet Earth that we can't just stop polluting now. We need to actively develop new technology to take out carbon from the atmosphere that we've already put into it. And so yeah, really good book. Then um, I read this 25 ways of looking at AI. It was okay. Having read Super Intelligence and The Singularity is Near, it was kind of meh because it was just a collection of essays. And once you've read the like um, magnum opus of a field or the reference book that everyone else refers to in a field like Sapiens or um, Thinking Fast or Thinking Slow, you know, things like that. Um, reading the other books that uh, authors wrote after reading those original textbooks, those founding textbooks of a field, is kind of meh, not really worth it sometimes. So, yeah. I uh, read this enjoyable book uh, recently, uh, The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It's a really good, uh, really good period piece of historical fiction set in like 1970s, 80s Hollywood and the kind of drama that takes place in this girl's life. And basically, like, all the sacrifices one has to make in order to accomplish our modern day definition of fame and movie stardom and how that isn't actually really always appealing. And so yeah, it was a really good book. I enjoyed it. I'm currently halfway through Michelle Obama's Becoming. Really enjoying it so far. She's got a wonderful uh, way of writing and a wonderful narration. I'm listening to the audiobook so I can really hear the story. Um, yeah, I read Barack Obama's book uh, last year, or maybe it was the year before, and really enjoyed it. Um, you know, hearing all about his time in the presidency and all about the things that changed in his life. And, you know, hearing uh, Michelle Obama's side of things is really interesting as well. And she's a powerful woman in her own right, um, with regards to being like a lawyer and then going on. I'm only about halfway through and going on and doing all the other amazing things that she did. So, yeah, really worthwhile reading and I'm really enjoying it. So those are all the books uh, that I have read. And then some of the biggest books that I want to read this year include um, The Idea Factory about Bell Labs and the Great Age of American Innovation. Um, I've just started it, but it's amazing how 
just a few people and just a few businesses can shape the entire modern day world. You know, we like to think of technology and the internet and all of the uh, devices that we use on a day to day basis as the product of huge systems and huge technological change over the centuries, which they are. But also, there's a few key characters in history, like the guys that worked at Bell Labs and that, that we owe a lot of our modern day world to. You know, the phone, the telegraph, um, computers, transistors, designed and invented by a few guys. Um, and it really, you know, it's obviously they have a lot of systems and, uh, you know, masses of people behind them in order to accomplish what they've accomplished. But the mere fact that certain individuals can bring about such big technological change and shape literally the lives of billions of people a couple of decades after they were around in the primes of their career really gives weight to the fact that you can have meaningful impact with your career. And choosing a career is really important because it can have such a big impact on the world around you. And so inspirational and yeah, I've just read the first few pages, been, been enjoying it so far. Daniel Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Thinking Slow. It's a classic and, uh, sorry, there we go. Uh, thinking Fast and Thinking Slow. It's a classic and I'm really excited to read it. Oh, it smells good. Um, the Sea is Not Made of Water. I got this over Christmas after our scuba diving trip because I really enjoyed it and I really enjoyed learning about the ocean and that. And so learning about uh, the small little biological um, mechanisms and that that take place in the smallest of rock pools is going to be exciting. So, yeah. And then, <laughs> goodness gracious, this thing's a tome. Uh, and Ryan's Atlas Shrugged, because everyone needs to read a classic every now and again. And uh, this thing is longer than all of the Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit books put together. It's a thousand, like 180 pages or something. Um, yeah, I think the audiobook is 60 hours long, so I'll probably listen to it and read it in parts as I go about my life this year. I hope I've finished it by the end of this year, but yeah, I'm trying to branch out and read some classics as well. Uh, it's always a good thing. But uh, yeah, I think those are all like the really impactful books that I read in the last year and want to read in the coming year. Um, I'll obviously have to read a lot more to hit my goal of 50 books this year, but just some really good um, pieces of information that have gone into my head in the last year and that have shaped my way of thinking. Um, if you don't read a lot, I encourage you to get out there and get some books, audio books or physical books or a Kindle, you know, whatever actually just lets you get the information into your head. Um, reading is an amazing tool and amazing relaxing way of learning about the world around you and shaping your mind in a positive manner and we don't often talk about how the information diet that you have is even more important sometimes than your physical uh, culinary diet because your body is shaped by the food that you put into it and in the same way your mind is shaped by the ideas information and noise that you let in and in a very noisy world of social media and loud voices in the media you need to also put in some good knowledge into your brain from reputable sources and sources that make you think widely and diversely about the world and all of its constituent parts. So yeah, there's your motivation to read for the year. I'll catch you soon. Thanks for watching. See you later. Bye.